right over here so it looks better. Oh! back with a new video. It has been a while since I physically made a video. I've only been uploading stuff that has been pre-uploaded or pre-filmed, pre-edited, stuff like that over the past like week and a half. So this is new for me right now and a week and a half is kind of a long time to not have filmed for me because I've just been doing a lot. I'll get into that during this video. But yeah, I'm back. I will be going to Japan in a little bit less than a week. I will get into that during this video about how I saved up around, what was it, $7,400 for this trip to Japan. Now keep in mind all the money isn't for me. I actually wanted to treat my boyfriend Kevin for this trip and honestly save him from his working schedule because he's been working so much. So I decided to treat him on a vacation with me finally because a lot of you guys have always asked, oh, why doesn't Kevin come with you uh, on all of your Japan trips or just traveling out of the country on your own? And it's because he's been working so much. So I wanted to treat him and have him come out for two weeks to Kyoto and Tokyo with me next month in a week with all my friends. So we're all gonna go together. I think there's gonna be around maybe five or six of us the entire time. And my friend Ariel from Ariel Amazing Day is going to come for a couple of days in Tokyo, which I'm super excited about. And I'll be meeting a bunch of other friends that I've known for a while also there in Tokyo or Kyoto, either one. I cannot wait. I'm super excited to have fun on this vacation. I had to save so much money, especially saving up for two people. Now I would have been done saving probably three or four months ago if I was just saving up for myself because that was the easiest part. Just saving up for me was not hard at all. Um, I spent around $2,100 on two tickets and two Airbnb spots. And then um, I had everyone else split up the rest of it equally for the trip. So if you're going with the whole group, it's a lot easier to save money because you can save up for a cheaper spot when you all split up the money. If you're traveling on your own, if you don't have anyone to stay with, it's best to get a smaller space where you save a lot for maybe the week or two that you're going to be there. If you're going for a whole month like I did last year, keep in mind that is a long time and you will basically be living there uh, for a whole month. Like that's a month full of rent basically if you think about it. So the less you save, the more money you will end up saving. So I think two weeks is actually perfect, but it depends on what you want to do or how long you want to go. I was lucky enough to stay with my friend Christina last time and we probably only went to one hotel in Tokyo for like four to five days. Um, we had a little bit of an Airbnb issue with the owner and it was not a good situation. So just make sure that you're checking up how the place looks before you go, because it can be a little bit deceiving, especially with Airbnb. Hotels are sometimes the best, but they do cost more also. So you're gonna have to play around with that. But I'm talking about this trip, not really last year. I'm, I will probably be referencing a little bit from last year and my expenses and how much I had to save and stuff like that. If you're traveling, um, maybe around this time of year if you choose your ticket for September or even like I did last year. I think I went around May slash June. Like I went the end of May and I went into June and part of July, I think. <clears throat> so my ticket both this year and last year, I only paid $500 per ticket. It was literally, if I had paid just for myself, it would have been like $520 or something. And last year it was like 509. So I try my best first of all to save on the ticket because you can save so much more money for like food, transportation, your living situation that you're gonna be having while you're there, stuff like that. If you save money on your ticket, that will save you so much trouble. I promise you it will be a good investment. Um, and I'm talking like that's round trip. That's not just one way, it's a round trip for both places. Now usually you will have a layover, have a layover in China again for like maybe two to three hours. That's not a big deal. I think I'll be in Beijing actually for my layovers, um, which isn't bad. You do save a lot more money on your ticket. You can probably save up to like $500 by having a layover. If you're going just straight to Tokyo or straight to Kyoto, it will be a higher price. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you want to save money, get a layover and you can look for a shorter layover. So keep in mind about that. The ticket could be a lot cheaper if it's like 
a 10 hour layover or you can spend the extra hundred dollars on a three or two hour layover probably even just one hour so just keep that in mind my occupation is a freelancer so i have a few different jobs i basically work on my youtube videos i work for youtube i also get money from instagram sponsorships i work with different companies to promote items makeup stuff like that number three is i get gigs so i either do a makeup campaign, a clothing campaign, or someone asks me to help them with a the shoot and I'll get money from that. So for example, as for the gigs go, I've had three makeup campaigns in 2019 and each of those was a good amount of money that I had gotten. Most of them can range from like 700, 500, 600, a thousand dollars each gig. So for me, because my rent is so cheap here, I pay only 600, Kevin pays 600, our rent is 1,200 for this apartment. I save a lot of money on other things and if I put my money away, I don't touch it. So I put it in my savings account. So depending on how early you start saving, you can see what works for you the best. I always save up for a year in advance. Now this year I made a lot more money, so I only had to save up probably six to seven months in advance. And I didn't really start saving until like four months before the trip, like hardcore saving you guys. So I could afford this year to not have to save for that long, which maybe the first year that I went to Japan with my friends, I probably had to save a year in advance because I was doing a nine to five job. I worked at TJ Maxx, I barely made any money. So I also had to use a credit card during that trip, which was also hard. But out of my own money, I saved up around $2,000. Um, and that was really hard for me to save you guys. And it was, yeah, it was just a lot. So, and I had gone on that trip for maybe close to a month. And so again, if I only spent two weeks maybe on my first trip to Japan and Korea, I wouldn't have spent all of that money or even needed to use a credit card. Um, but I would avoid having to use one. I personally, or if you get points, I guess that's cool, but I like to just use my own money for trips and stuff for vacations. Um, so last year I saved up a total of $5,000 for my entire trip. Of course this year I had to save up more because I'm spending less time there and also I'm I'm covering one other person. Yeah, so as far as the freelancing thing goes, I get gigs. I usually either get them from people that I already know or friends. I don't usually ask for gigs. I just usually get contacted for them every once in a while and that always helps me out. Um, and then the fourth one is sponsorships. So I get sponsorships from YouTube, Instagram, uh, sometimes Twitter. It's very rare though if it's Twitter at all. Um, so those, those three websites I usually get sponsorships from. And I use a website called Aspire IQ. I just sign up for different campaigns and stuff and randomly I will get them and I will save my money that way. So for me, budgeting is a huge thing, especially as a freelancer, you don't know how much money you're gonna be making every single month. I know how much money I'll be making on YouTube each month. I know how much money I'll be making on Instagram sometimes, but Instagram is just different. Like the more that I post, the better I'll get more emails from companies asking me to either review a product or I'll get a PR email or something like that, which really helps me out also for content for YouTube. So it really just depends. Um, I also work with Ipsy as well, so I get stuff through them sometimes. But working with companies is a huge thing because YouTube doesn't pay as much as it used to. I mostly get brand deals, you guys. So, um, and Instagram has been helping me so much this year. I've been getting so many good brand deals from Instagram because it's usually makeup related or hair related or even fashion related, which are things that I already love. So recommending that stuff to you guys has been very good. I even recently had a hair sponsorship on my Instagram and I freaking love their products. And so things like that go hand in hand. If I need hair products, I need shampoo, I need conditioner, stuff like that, that works for my natural hair. I think it's a win-win for you guys and for myself so that I can um, show y'all what works for me. Again, let's go back to budgeting. So if you know how much you're gonna be making every single month, you need to plan out how early you will start saving for your trip, depending on your salary, depending on how much you make, stuff like that, especially as a freelancer. I just put my money away each paycheck. So I'll take half of it or I'll take maybe 70% of it and just put it away, act like I don't have it and just keep the rest for myself. Um, for me, bills, rent always come first. I have to think about that first before I actually save that month. All of my bills, the rest will go towards my rent. And so after that, any extra money that I make, it's either towards like food here and there, going out to eat with friends, which I don't normally do at all really. Um, plus I've been trying to like get back in shape. So I usually cook at home, which saves so much money. 
You can save so much by eating at home. I will say that right now. When you're saving up for a trip for vacation, eat at home, guys. You don't have to go out partying every weekend or like going out to eat because it just adds up, especially in LA. Like the food can be so expensive to go out to eat all the time, especially if you're eating healthier meals. Just literally stay at home and eat or I'll go out if I want to get some coffee or something, just you know, keep my sanity. Because <laughs> you want to be able to switch it up before you leave. You don't want to just be in saving mode and just not have fun. Like there are times where you need to go out with your friends and stuff like that. So keep that in mind as well. Buffer money for that if you need it. Um, and also I've been making coffee at home because I am a coffee person and so I tend to go out more for coffee but recently I've been making it at home which has also saved me so much money as well. So keep that in mind, that also works. If you need to have a year in advance where you save up all of your money to go on vacation, that will work for you. For me, this time was around four to seven months where I was saving. Four months was the hardcore saving mode and then seven months I just kind of started saving a little bit here and a little bit there. I also needed to replace like my computer charger. I needed to get new equipment for my camera, for my phone. I had to fix a few things here and there. So keep in mind, you're probably gonna need money to also prep for your trip if you are vlogging. If you're not, don't worry about that stuff. But like for me, that's my job. So I have to have things to take with me that will work. I'm no longer a person that has to like buy a bunch of clothes for vacation because I know going out of the country several times now, I know that you will be buying stuff while you're there. So don't even worry about that. It's not even a thing. Uh, the next thing that I've been using is this investment app called Acorns. I started saving around maybe February for this trip um, on the app. So it basically takes out around five dollars every single week out of your account and i've also set it up to where it takes out all of my roundups so if i spend like 544 on a meal or like a drink or something it's going to take the rest of that money and put it into your acorns and that also adds up as well and on top of you saving money it also it invests in a bunch of different i guess high performing companies um, but usually go up in stocks. So this is pretty much a stocks app, but I've already taken out all of my money already. I had around $468 in here and now I'm back to 16. Um, I'm already starting my savings again for next year's trip to Korea. So I'm already planning on saving up maybe like 700 to $800 on my ticket as well as transportation. And then I'll save up the rest of it probably in my other savings account, like my actual bank savings. So I basically use this as my secondary savings account, which for this Japan trip, I actually saved up for my Shinkansen ticket and Disneyland tickets for me and Kevin, which was so effortless because you don't even have to think about putting money into your savings in this app. It just takes it out of it automatically every single week for you. And it just adds up so quickly and you don't even know that it's taking it out, um, at least for me. So you can adjust it depending on how much you're making. Since I'm making more now, whenever I get back from Japan, I might kind of bring it up to like $10 a week. However you want to do it, whatever is up to your pace, up to your speed do it that way, but I love this app because it just saves money for you and it invests in different companies and then it just raises the amount tremendously. Plus when you refer different people, you get more money put into your account. I think you get like $5 per person that you add and they also get $5 off to start with with their investments and it grows like crazy. It's so freaking good. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my Acorns link down below. You can go ahead and get $5 in your account if you start using it. Um, I personally love it. I just linked it to my debit card and worked out. And so I ended up having an extra almost $500 for this trip just because I passively saved with it. Remember, as I said before, bills come first. So make sure that when you're leaving, you have your bills paid for or that you will have it automatically taken out of your account while you're on vacation. So kind of account for that too. So that's why I always think it's a good thing to oversave because you also want to come back with some money. You don't just want to spend all of your money during the trip and then come back with nothing or at least have money coming in whenever you're getting back uh, that you know of. So I just take care of yourself. You guys are like, that's the biggest thing. Don't just spend all of your money while you're out of the country. That's just not very smart. Um, that's why I, again, I like to oversave and I don't spend all of it because I think I've pretty much been through everything. Yeah, this kind of gave you guys a little bit of insight into how I live and basically how I make money and stuff because it's not only just from one source. I could not live off of money just from YouTube. That is so impossible for me right now at least. If you're trying to save for something in a short amount of time, you will have to work very hard depending on your living situation, your schedule, stuff like that. So 
keep all of those things in mind. This was how I do it. I'm not saying this works for everyone. I have a different situation. So you have to kind of tweak things depending on how you're living. And for me as a social media person, making money from that, it's just a different scenario. So you might have a better, you might have a better plan going on if you work a nine to five job and how, depending on how much money you're actually making. Again, if you make less money, start saving earlier and that will help you in the long run. You won't be as stressed out and at least you'll be saving enough money to have fun and to go on a great vacation and all that good stuff. Vlogs coming out for Japan really, really soon. Put down below what you guys wanna see me vlog or film about in Japan. Um, I'll be doing more informational videos. So if you have any ideas, any at all, let me know down below below yeah also y'all have been asking me about my workout journey and things of that nature on my instagram i've been posting what i've been doing i literally have updates almost every day because i do work out a lot um so yeah if you want to check that out follow me on instagram at tima loves lemons um you can also go ahead and follow me on tiktok at tima loves makeup if you want and follow me on my patreon patreon slash tima loves lemons i will talk to you guys later bye